Almost two years ago, I uploaded a video called Why People Don't Like the Current Halo Art Style. I intended to upload it as just this small, tiny, one-off little thing where I was just voicing my personal opinion as well as the opinion of others that I had seen. Turns out way more people agreed with this sentiment than I thought. This was already kind of brewing within the Halo community. People generally unhappy with the kind of unfocused and very non-Halo direction the series' aesthetic had taken. So kicking off a shitstorm two years ago, where the community started to talk about art styles and pull out their hair with frustration at new designs, over-designs, redesigns and stuff, it all led to this. This trailer where this trailer felt meticulously designed to get the best possible reaction from those people who are not happy with the current Halo aesthetic, such as myself. This trailer made me more excited for Halo than I had been in quite some time, and there's a variety of reasons why. Not only does it capture the essence of what Halo has been missing for a while, mystery, massive landscapes, music that is a little bit more haunting and subdued instead of loud and in your face like an action movie. <laughs> As well as, most importantly, the return to a more 80s slash 90s aesthetic that the 2001 Halo Combat Evolved had, where it sort of adopted that what's old is new style of futuristic technology, kind of like the Aliens movies. Here's something that I want people to keep in mind. Halo Infinite is bringing Halo back to its iconic art style, its timeless art style. But there were people in the Halo community who did really like the new direction of the art style in Halo 4 and Halo 5. Now we're not here to say that they're wrong, they're wrong, because that's all subjective. They personally preferred it. But here's the thing, we didn't like it when Halo was this, right? <laughs> Well, there are some people in the Halo community who are going through this exact same thing now in response to this. We know what they are going through. We know how they feel about the franchise not looking like what they want it to look like. Instead of attacking them and making fun of them, help out our brothers. Help them through this transitionary period. We know what they're going through. We've been in their shoes before. We can help them through this, and together it strengthens the community. You catch way more flies with honey than you do vinegar, as the saying goes. Here are a couple of things that I noticed from the trailer personally. So the trailer starts off with a shot of a lot of uh, lighting effects where you can see the light bouncing off the water. It's all very impressive stuff and it's obviously here to demonstrate the advances that they've made with the engine. But more importantly from a but more importantly from a presentation point of view, there's a blue light that seems to be moving across this opening. That blue light is a mystery and we're going to get back to it later. We also see these weird deer creatures with these weird antlers, and those deer creatures are very relevant to something that's going to pop up soon, as well as them seemingly reacting to that same blue light. There's that blue light again. What is it? There's this weird natural environment, but there's this alien blue light that keeps appearing. Now we get a cave with these weird symbols and runes. A quick browse on Twitter reveals nothing. Even the Halo lore boys don't know what civilization wrote these. This is completely new. Could we be seeing Forerunner era human beings who created these runes and maybe these stone rings? Now let's actually talk about the stone rings quickly. These things are clearly set up as some kind of like monument to the Halo array, or maybe even they were designed by the Forerunners themselves? We don't know. We don't know. It's mysterious. That's what I love about it. But what I also do like is it's not just a series of stone rings. It's also clearly supposed to be a visual throwback to Halo 3's art style. If you guys remember, Halo 3 put a lot of focus on rings in its aesthetic. Savo Highway was covered in the ruins of the space elevator, but more importantly, the parts of the space elevator that survived were the rings around it. And it's just, you know, I love it. 
I love it. I love all this throwback stuff. Halo 3 is my favorite looking Halo game in the series, and I am beyond happy that a lot of inspiration for Halo Infinite seems to have been taken from Halo 3's aesthetic. We see what appears to be a warthog driving off over there in the background. Who's driving the Warthog? We're gonna find out in a second. Here we get a good look at a radio that's trembling under the heavy footsteps of something outside the tent. The radio is sending an SOS that somebody is stranded on the Zeta Halo ring. Now, Zeta Halo is very interesting. There's a lot of room for very interesting story potential. At some point, I could make a layman's guide to Zeta Halo that kind of breaks it down into more digestible description. Uh, but Zeta Halo is very interesting in the Halo universe. It has a lot of history. And if this next game is taking place on the Zeta Halo, that leaves a lot of room for interesting story things to happen. This radio is knocked down by this massive shadow with very heavy footfalls. In my opinion, this shadow is the rhino that we saw later on in the trailer. We see more of those mysterious blue lights. The questions are starting to build. What is that blue light? What is it? What's shooting into the sky? We get a good look at some more of these alien rhinos that actually start a stampede as the sun rises. We get a good look at what appears to be pollen as well as a really nicely rendered tree trunk. We get some abandoned military gear covered in a tent with tall grass. Again, more visual callbacks to Halo 3's art style. This reminds me a lot of Savo Highway, just this look and the mood of this shot. Interestingly, the Eld on Twitter actually pointed out that this UNSC gear that we see just kind of like abandoned, it seems to belong to the UNSC Infinity and the UNSC Eternity. If you guys don't know what the Eternity is, in the lore, the Eternity was basically a sister ship to the UNSC Infinity. It was designed the same way, but the thing is the Eternity, it was not complete and the Infinity was already off doing its own thing. The Infinity actually did suffer a lot of damage and at one point they actually just stopped production on the Eternity and relocated its resources over to repairing the Infinity. So that's interesting. Are we possibly going to see the Eternity replace the Infinity? And if the Eternity is supposedly incomplete, they could use that as an excuse to have an Infinity-style ship for the Halo franchise that looks more run down and rugged and more in line with the classic aesthetic of Halo. Clever stuff if they do choose to go that route. We get a good look at the inside of an aircraft, and judging by that cockpit, we're in a Bungie-era Pelican. The old Pelican is back, we don't have to deal with the redesign. If you actually notice over there, the poster says, Fight for Her, which is a throwback to Combat Evolved. The computer states the date as taking place two years after the events of Halo 5, so there's going to be a bit of a time jump in Halo Infinite, which is exciting. Over here we see a manta ray shaped forerunner machine that seems to be investigating the wreck of a warthog underwater. Something to note is that this forerunner machine looks way more like a bungee era forerunner machine. Instead of dumb floaty bits and an obnoxious monster face, it looks a lot more subdued. If you look at its arms, they look kind of like the Bungie era Forerunner machines, where they're a lot more robotic and stiff looking. Something I also haven't seen a lot of people talking about is Halo has had a rocky relationship with water. Water is essentially a death zone. If you so much as think about jumping into water, the game is immediately restarting you at the last checkpoint. Halo does not want you to go into water, and in Halo 5, there's no volumes or anything. It looks very odd, very weird. But here, the engine is trying to demonstrate to us that it can make light react very realistically under the water. It's trying to show us that there is depth under the ocean. This isn't just like a flat sheet of whatever with a water texture on top of it. There's depth to this. It's an actual ocean this time. What does that mean for the next Halo game? Will there be a little bit of water stuff going on? Who knows? It may just be me overthinking. Here we've got Marines calling for support by lighting a flare, and these Marines look way more inspired by Combat Evolved and Halo Reach's Marines. My personal favorite Marine design is the Halo 3 Marines, but you know what? I take my victories where I can. Everything else is happy, and you know what? These Marines do not look like that, and that makes me happy. These Marines look awesome. Something also to note is that they're holding Halo 4 era battle rifles. 
What this means is that we may not necessarily be seeing a full blown revert back to the old art style. We may see a hybridization of the two art styles, taking what works from the new art style and throwing the rest of it in the trash. Also notice that the Marines, the battle rifle, it seems to have a yellow ammo counter like the Halo 5 battle rifle. I don't like that. UNSC gear should have a blue ammo counter on it, but whatever. It's probably just the exact asset taken from Halo 5. We see pine trees in the distance, kind of like Combat Evolved and Halo 3's aesthetic. Over here, we get a great sweeping shot. Off in the distance, you can see the Marines flare, signaling for help. You see a flock of sentinels over here and over here. We see herds of rhinos when finally, we see Chief, who has noticed the flare and more importantly, He's wearing new armor. This is exciting. This got me really excited. Cause look, so far everything we were seeing up to this point was way more like what Halo should look like. And I, being the cynical person that I am, was expecting, oh God, now we're gonna see his new helmet and stuff like that. I was expecting 343 to just try to keep making their new chief design work, but no we seem to be having another redesign of the Master Chief. This is gonna now be the fourth armor that he's donned in the series, his fourth armor redesign. I don't really count Halo 2 and Halo 3s as a redesign because Halo 3s is more of like a different spin on the Halo 2 armor. But this, if we look at it, off the bat, it looks like the classic armor, but the silhouette seems to be a little bit more like the Halo 4 helmet, but clearly the designs are a lot more inspired by the classic helmet and stuff, and especially the legs, that looks straight up Halo 2 Anniversary. Zoom in on the little details of his legs, there's like little scuffs, you can see like paint chipping and stuff. But overall, his armor looks relatively new, just a little bit scuffed up, which, hey, maybe it could have been just a result of the manufacturing, the mishandling it, or maybe Chief has been using this new armor for a little while now. I love it. I love that this is now the look of Chief. Chief looks more like Chief now. I'm a big fan of the Halo 4 Spartan armor for Master Chief. But following Halo 5, I've started to associate this design with bad memories. So seeing them ditch that armor and go back to something that is a little bit more safe, a little bit more familiar, a little bit more uh, warm to me, it makes me happy. Chief now walks off camera, assumedly to get in his warthog to go save those marines after noticing their distress beacon. And then we cut to a shot of him riding with them in the back seat across the plains of the halo ring as we finally see what's causing those blue lights we've been seeing all over the trailer. It's those forerunner pillar things from Combat Evolved, they're back. This is a lot more forerunner. We can see that they look mysterious off in the distance. We don't exactly know what those blue lights are, but they're shooting up into the sky. We see these massive monolithic pillars stretching out of the ground and reaching tall into the air. And as the camera begins to pan up the halo ring, we see night starting to fall. So this trailer took place over maybe the course of one day, or perhaps those forerunner lights signal the ring changing the time of day. We also see along the band more forerunner structures beginning to activate. So it seems like the whole ring is starting to come to life. And we also notice that this ring seems to be a lot uh, smaller and wider than normal halo rings. This is probably due to it actually being the Zeta halo ring which houses wildlife and a very, very disturbing history with the flood and the very first grave mine. Here we get a back of Chief's helmet where it definitely is a hybridization of his Halo 4 and his more classic armor because the back of the helmet looks a little bit more like his new armor, especially the AI slot. But the AI slot, he's putting a chip in there. Now here's the thing, could this be a splash screen for their new engine? Or is this possibly just a teaser that he is indeed getting a new AI? And what is this new AI? Well, that's the mystery. Guys, I'm super excited about Halo Infinite. All those people yelling and crying about how art style debate will never lead to anything because you should just give up. Well, guess what? We didn't give up and this is how we got rewarded. Halo looks like Halo again. Good job, the entire Halo community. You guys did it. This 
is the kind of Halo experience I want from a modern game. We don't need things over-designed, we don't need things to look ridiculous, and Lord knows we didn't need Halo to completely redesign itself simply because new Halo. No, Halo's look is timeless, distinct. The Halo Infinite trailer was trending. People were excited because this looks more like the Halo they want to buy. This is good. This is very good, and it has me excited to learn more. I'm very interested, and I haven't felt this interested in Halo in quite some time. So guys, if you enjoyed this video, leave a like on the video. It really helps. Make sure to hit the bell icon. The reason I'm bringing it up is not to be annoying, but YouTube has been screwing us all lately. And, you know, I really appreciate YouTube doing that, you know, just not being consistent. So guys, I'll see you on the next video, and I hope you have a good day.